on a natural grass surface. Nice paint job. And this isn't Fort Lewis turf. This isn't Western State turf. This is a fast natural grass surface. Kick is going to go in and out the back of the end zone, so it'll come out to the 25-yard line, and that's where Shadron State will start on offense. We mentioned that Matt Vinson is the uh, quarterback. Started the year, I think that uh, T.D. Stein got some action early on, but they've gone back to Vinson, the sophomore, so uh, it seems like Every year for the last 10 years, it seemed like it was uh, some guy named McLean. Well, I think this is the first year I've covered him where there hasn't been a McLean on the field. Long count. Vincent takes a snap. Screen pass out in the flat left. Caught first down and more up the sideline. Knocked out of bounds by Estica, but not before a nice gain on the play for Shadron State. Zach Bargan on the uh, grab. He's a big target, and the first attempt at him, they whiffed on it, and they get a first down. Yeah, you got to wrap up. These are those bubble screens. You're going to be on an island, these corners, one on one. You got to shed that blocker and make that tackle, and he missed. So, first and 10 from the 41 yard line. Again, they go naked, th trips to the right, two wide outs to the left. Vincent all by himself in the backfield. Now they bring Jackson back, and he lines up on his left hip from the gun. Thunderwolves will rush three. They give it to Jackson, bounces it outside. Nice gain. He's across the 45, out to the 48-yard line. Our first look at one Derek Jackson, the Pueblo West product. A nice gain off the right side. Looked like it was clogged inside. It looked like it was designed to go between the tackles, and he bounced it out seven yards. So it'll be second down and three for the Eagles. They look over to the sideline in unison. They don't go into a huddle. Everybody looks over. They get the play call. Can't be that complicated. They don't look at wristbands or anything. They know what the signals are. They're going to go uh, almost look like a uh, wildcat formation, but the ball's over on the right hash mark. Two backs in the backfield this time, and they're going to give it to Jackson up the middle, and he's hit immediately and stuffed. Kevin Cuff coming in there along with Rosenbrock, both inside linebackers, stuffed him right at the line of scrimmage. Again, that misdirection, almost like the receiver coming in motion going back. Nothing in the middle there. Ian Kelly with the kind of clogging up that hole, too. Jackson, the lone back, two wide outs left, one wide out right. Ball just inside the right hash mark. Thunderwolves jump, but they stay on side, pass over the middle, and it's caught for the first down. Nice inside pass. They try to rip the ball free, but a good grab on the inside by the uh, tight end that time, or the inside receiver, Zach Bargain, a quick hitter. Thunderwolves had it well covered. Yeah, you can't play much better defense than that. The ball was right where it had to be, and the receiver had on, held on to it. Double wide out left. They're going to roll the pocket left. Vincent looks up the sideline. Now shoots it up the sideline. Ball's caught inside the 25 down to the 24-yard line. Great play by Vincent that time. Working with Zach Bargan directing traffic. He kind of pointed up the sideline told Bargan, hey, you go up the sideline. I'll hit you on a streak. It was just kind of a freelance play. It wasn't the route intended. And then he just kind of pointed, and he just snuck out there. So it'll be field goal attempt here. Alex Ferdinand, the place kicker. He's a senior. He's been here forever. And it'll be a 42-yard, maybe a 43-yard attempt. It looks like 43-yard. They're going to place it on the 33, ball on the right hash mark. Thunderwolves very good at blocking kicks. Good snap. Ball's down. Kick is on the way. It's got plenty of leg. And it is good. 10.20 to go here in the first quarter. Shadron straight. They strike first with the field goal. They lead it 3 to nothing on Fox Sports Pueblo. So far, so good for the home team, Joe. I think they couldn't imagine a better start. Well, uh, the intimidation factor is not there. They're not intimidated. CSU Pueblo, though, if, if, if you've watched this team or listened to us at all this year, they're a little bit of a slow starting team. They kind of got to get their feel. A lot of new kids on the defense. They, they're not sure what to expect out here. Give them a little bit of time. Thunder will show blitz. Here they come off the edge. Pass over the middle. It's caught, and it's going to be close to the first down. It is a first down up the field as uh, retreating on the play was O'Boyle. Gave away the first down momentarily, but he's a big dude and broke the tackle right at the uh, down to make and gets upfield for a decent gain. Hey, they had their chances to stop him behind the line of scrimmage, and they whiffed on the tackles. First and 10 from the 37-yard line. Thunderwolves jump offside. They are offside this time. Free play for the Eagles. They fire it down the middle. Caught into Thunderwolf territory. Down across the 40, down to the 38-yard line. Danny O'Boyle with the grab. They had a free shot that time, and Vincent took it and delivered a strike. That's a, that's a great play by a quarterback, knowing that he's got playing with the house's money. Just take a shot. This is going to be a 23-yard pass play. All the way down to the 39-yard line of the Thunderwolves. So the second straight trip into Thunderwolf territory for the Shadron State offense. They lead it 3 to nothing. 7.03 to go here in the first quarter. 
Thunderwolves lone possession resulted in a three and out. Shadron State moved it on their first all the way down the field before they stalled out and got the field goal. But they're close to scoring territory again here. Double wide out left, single wide out right. Ball's right in the middle of the field. Jackson the lone back. And they're going to give it to Jackson. Bounces it outside. Nice cut. Spins inside the 35. He's got another first down for Shadron State all the way down close to the 28-yard line. Nice move by Jackson right at the point of attack. Tell me he's not playing inspired football, saying that's my hometown and uh, I'm playing up here. Thunder will show pressure off the edge here. Vincent's little three-step drop pass over the middle. Ball's caught. Getting forward, first down and more up the sideline to the five. Touchdown, Eagles. Great move that time by Danny O'Boyle as he caught it right along the 20-yard line running east and west, but he got a block on the edge and got up the sideline. Beautiful play by the Eagles. Just poor tackling by CSU Pueblo. They had him twice in the crossing route, couldn't bring him down, and then he got a great block on the edge. Touchdown. Well, Thunderwolves in a bit of trouble here early on in this ball game, trailing at nine to nothing. Shadron State may go for two here. They line up like they are. They may shift and go back, and now they'll go into kick formation. They were just seeing what the Thunderwolves gave them. Now they go with Ferdinand, the kicker. Ball's down. Kick is up, and it is good. Great start for Shadron State. 4:57 to go here in the first quarter. Eagles lead it ten to nothing. This is Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports Pueblo. Thompson from the gun. Has Cameron with him in the backfield. They fake the draw play. Thompson sets in the pocket. Fires left. Ball is caught for the first down up the sidelines. Williams. That was a deep out pattern that time. Ball was thrown about 40 yards in the air because the ball was on the right hash mark. And Thompson threw it all the way across the field. Yeah, at least it moves the chains, Jim. The third and nine is not what you want all day against Shadron State. Third and five now after the loss of a yard. Cooper going to go wide to the right. Duncan wide to the left. Boyd in the slot to the left. Two backs in the backfield here as both Cam and Bernard in the game at the same time. Thompson from the gun. Takes the snap. Fake it, roll it right, fire down the sideline, looking for Cooper. He drops the ball. He had it in his hands at the five-yard line, wide open, and he just flat dropped it. Now Thunderwolves face fourth down. Well, Cooper can't blame the quarterback on that one. He laid it right on the money and just let it slip right through his hands. You know, you got to start making plays. You're 118 left in the first quarter. You're down 10, and you've, you've shown a little bit of sign to offense, but you better start making some plays. Down 10 to nothing. Thompson will go to the gun. He's got Cam with him on his left hip. Trips to the left. Single wide out right. That's Cooper. They're going to fake it into the middle. Thompson now flushed out of the pocket. He's got all kinds of room. Now he's going to fake and run with the ball. He's across the 35-40. 45. He's got the first down. That's the first time we've really seen uh, this year freelancing a little bit that time. Thompson put a move on a man coming up to get him. Again, Jim, if he sees that, he just has to go. He had 20 yards of open space. It was like, it was like Shadron State Park in front of him. He's just got to go. So ball out to the 44-yard line. A gain of 12, first and 10 for the Thunderwolves. Trailing 10 to nothing here, just underway in the second quarter. Thompson will go from the gun this time. He has Cam on his right hip. Double wide out, right play action, look over the middle. Wide open, nice one-handed grab by Zach Boyd. Are you kidding me? He reached up with that big mid, Joe, and just pulled it out of the air. Well, this, he's right at home, man. He's from Fort Lupton. This, these small towns, he's right at home. This is like Friday Night Lights for Zach, Zach Boyd. It's first and 10 Thunderwolves, ball at the 37-yard line of the Eagles. Boyd in motion now resets on the right side. They run the uh, reverse. Here's Duncan around the right side. All kinds of open space. Cross the 30, 25, 20 down the sideline, 10, 5, cuts it inside to about the three-yard line. Beautiful run that time. Boy, you can see that one opening up. And uh, Kieran Duncan, he's had some great success here in Shadron, Nebraska. Caught a touchdown pass on the opening play from scrimmage last year. That was a big gainer. 34 yards on that. He needed three more, though. It's first and goal from the three. Had that one man to beat. Had to cut inside of him. And that got tripped up a little bit. And then taken down at the three. All in all, a great gain, though. Eye formation for the Thunderwolves. Cam the eye back. O'Malley is the fullback. Thompson up under center. They give it to Cam right up the middle. Bounces it to the goal line. Spins, reaches across the goal line. Touchdown. Cam McDonald with a little extra effort, Joe. That time as he was going to the turf, he just stuck the ball over the goal line. Hit initially. One spin move. Three-yard touchdown. Well, that kind of uh, restores order 
if you're a Thunderwolf fan right there, that drive there and a couple of big plays and maybe that play, you know, that's play by Zach Boyd, I think, sparked him. What a great catch that was. And then the uh, reverse to Duncan. Cam into the end zone. Extra point upcoming here. Ball's down. Kick is up. And it is good. 14.02 to play here in the first half. Thunderwolves are on the board. It's 10 to 7. Shadron State on top. Thunderwolves football on Fox Sports Pueblo. When they've had decent operating position, they've done all right in this game, getting two scores. That last time when they had to start from their own one, they couldn't get that initial first down. Looking left, Vincent under immense pressure. Look out from the backside. He's hit from behind. He might fumble this thing. He somehow hang on to it. Singleton, I thought Joe was for sure going to strip that. He came down with the chop, but Vincent somehow held on to the ball, but it's still a big loss. Boy, that's just a three-man rush. That shows you your, your linebackers and your safeties and your corners were doing a great job in coverage because CSU Pueblo just sent three guys there. So now they're going to go trips to the right as they bring the backup tailback, Cody Paul, in the game. He lines up in the slot to the right. Two wideouts left. They're looking over to the line of scrimmage for the play call here. They're going to run out of time, perhaps? Nope, I thought they might take a time out here. Third and 15. Vincent pumps left, now comes back right on the screen. And getting across the 35-40, first down. And again, Joe, missing tackles. Cody Paul, they had him short of the first down, but he broke that tackle and gets up the field for a first down. You have third and 16, and you give up a 20-yard screen. That was almost like a give-up play. You, you almost concede the possession, but Paul able to break those tackles and get forward for the first down. It's like a mulligan on the possession now from the 45-yard line. So they mark it off We're right back where we started from two plays ago. So it's second down and four after back-to-back five-yard markoffs, one against each team. Press coverage by the Thunderwolves here. Give it to Jackson. He's hit in the backfield and thrown for a loss. Great penetration off the defensive right side. As flying in there, coming into the ball game, Ikachuku Ihanaju into the ball game. They call him Rome, Joe, for short. And we'll call him Rome, too. And now he leaves. One play. He came in for one play, and it was a beauty. <laughs> and injured player is up off the field. It is uh, their star receiver, Danny O'Boyle. But he's up putting a little bit of pressure on that left leg. That's a good sign. But initially, man, it didn't look good at all. But he... Uh, putting a little bit more and more weight on it. Thunderwolves will start from their own four-yard line. They shift the formation now over to the left side, power to the left. Kind of a bunch formation. Ball's on the left hash mark. And they're going to play action. Thompson goes down the sideline. Back shoulder throw, a beauty to Zach Boyd. Nice delivery that time by A.J. Thompson. That's the first time this year, Joe, that I can remember him throwing a back shoulder throw that time, and Boyd came up with the grab. I think he tried one earlier at the Thunder Bowl, but that was a, that was a nice play, well designed because no one bought it except for Zach Boyd and A.J. Thompson. Well, Boyd so far in this game has been the receiving star. A couple of nice grabs out to the 23-yard line. First and 10 for the Thunderbolts. Gets a little operating room here now. Same formation, bunch formation to left. Cam the lone back. This time they'll run at the cam off the right side. Tries to bounce it inside. 30, 35, 40. Off to the races. 40. Cuts back inside. 35, 30. Now back to the sideline. 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Thunderwolves. What a run by Cam McDonald as he takes it to the house. Zigzagging back and forth, up and down the sideline, making the defender look a little silly, Joe. 77 yards. Wow, what a run indeed there for Cam McDonald. It's like, Joe, we, you know, John Riston preaches it. We try to tell the listeners, hey, got to be patient with that running game, and then they hit a big one. Poke, 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 gone. All right, here's the handoff of it. Oh, the Thunderbolts with Tony Campton and company. They just stuffed the entire middle of the line of scrimmage. Linebackers came up as well, but you know it's the big refrigerator on wheels. Derek Jackson has not seen a defensive front like this all year, and uh, zero yards on that one. Trying to get the lead back here as we have 4.50 to go in the first half. That looked like a false start on the right side. They didn't call it. Paul with the handle. Up the middle. He's got the first down and more. He's across the 40, down to the 36-yard line. Joe, it looked like the right guard or the right tackle moved about a tick soon on the play. They didn't throw the false start, and Paul got up the field. The whole right side win, Jim. The center didn't snap the ball, but no one saw it but us. A.J. Thompson lined up under the right guard initially. Now he's under the center. Fakes the draw play, rolls it right. Looking for Boyd. Now goes up the sideline instead. Ball caught up on the sideline. Big hit. 
after the ball caught by Cooper, and he's going to be right at the 30. He's going to be about a yard short of the first down. Cooper had to come back for the ball. He had to give up the first down by doing that, and then took a big-time shot but did well to hold on to the ball. Nice to see Coop get that catch, get the confidence. But he did take a, a huge shot. And he comes out of the ball game after that play. But Letlow splits wide to the left here on third and six. Thompson takes the snap. He's going to run a quarterback draw. He's got the first down and more. He's out across the four or 35 to the 37-yard line. First and 10 Thunderbolts. There's the first real designed quarterback draw we've seen this year that I can remember run that way. Well, and they have their three timeouts. Now it's time for clock management, Jim. You want to get in Greg O'Donnell's field of range if you can. Here today the band sounds really good. They're loud, but they're good, Joe. Well, that's the thing is, you know, we used to have a band and we were really loud, but we stunk. So now, if you're if you're if you're a band and you're good, I mean, these guys are playing some top forty hits and they they they're tight. And uh, they whoop it up here too for the basketball. It's a novel idea having a pep band for basketball games. It's still not too late. See you, Pueblo. Generate that band. You've got uh, you know you only got uh, a couple of home dates this uh, this half of the year, but in January. I think we can get that organized, get a band out there for the basketball games. But these guys do a good job. And the new arena, Joe, I don't know if you've been in the new basketball arena yet because uh, last year when it opened up, I mean, it is quite a state-of-the-art facility. I think probably the football stadium is probably next on their list, but they've done a lot of nice uh, improvement to the facilities here. Well, this whole place, if you came to Shatter, Nebraska, and you got off just where the truck stop is and the, the country kitchen, it's a nice little sleepy little town up here in Nebraska. And, 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 and the college is, is very progressive. You see some nice buildings here. Shadron State, they got off to such a great start in this ball game, let it 10 to nothing. Uh, then the Thunderbolts kind of restored her. I was really kind of worried, Joe, I'll tell you the truth there, when the Thunderbolts missed on a couple of opportunities when uh, they had Cooper in the clear, overshot him by about five yards, then he dropped a touchdown pass. But uh, then Thunderbolts came up with a couple of big plays there, then the big run, of course, by McDonald, kind of restored order. But like you said, it's it's still much in doubt. Well, I just don't like the tackling. CSU Pueblo has tackled very poorly today, and, and Shadron has made him pay. Maybe they could shore that up in the, in the second half. Uh, I think CSU Pueblo needs to make a statement with this opening drive of the second half. Well, Thunderbolts did outgain Shadron State, 267 to 211 in the first half. 189 yards on the ground for the Thunderbolts. Shadron State with only 45. That's the number that jumps out at you right now for Shadron State, not getting it done on the ground. They're used to having their way with ball clubs, running the football, but the Thunderbolts have shut them down. And you kind of got the feeling coming into the day that the team that probably ran best would have the best chance of winning. But uh, Shadron State has their passing game, though, Joe, we've mentioned it. It's kind of like an extension of the running game, just those quick passes and they get a lot of run or a lot of yak yards after catch. Well, that's why we don't get those stats, but I know somebody keeps I'd love to see Shadron's yard after catch because I guarantee you it's monumental right now. First and 10, Thunderwolves. Thompson up under center here. Double wide out left. Ball's on the right hash. Cam's back in the game. They look left. Screen pass left. Caught by Duncan. Gets a block. Turns the corner. He's across the 45 down the sideline. He's got the first down and he's hammered out of bounds. Thought a flag might come out because he was in the paint when he got drilled. But Joe, I can, you know, I can respect an official not calling that foul because it's hard for a safety or a cornerback to pull up when a guy's running full speed down the sideline, even though he is out of bounds. Well, the only thing I could say is that <laughs> Kieran Duncan was turned sideways. I mean, it basically is back to him. But yeah, I, I have no problem with no no call on that. First and ten from the 24 yard line. Here's McDonald around the left side, and there's a nice chop step, cuts inside, breaks a tackle into the clear touchdown. Another signature run by Cameron McDonald when it looks like nothing is there. The little choppy steps, breaks tackles, gets it on into the end zone. A thing of beauty. Well, you wanted a signature drive, a CSU Pueblo to start the half. There you go. Almost five minutes. Man, he just, Joe mentioned it. Poke, 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 gone. That's just kind of was there. Didn't have far to go that time, but again, it's the same type of run. Just looked like it was going nowhere, and he just keeps those feet moving and takes it on into the end zone. O'Donnell try to start another streak. Kick is on the way. Better snap this time, and the kick is up and good. 10.34 to go here in the third quarter. Thunderwolves, they've restored order for the moment. They lead it 20-10 to 10 on Fox Sports Pueblo. So first and 10 for the Eagles, their first possession of the second half. Here's a run off the left side. Good run by Jackson. He turns the corner. Gets ahead across the 30, out to about the 33-yard line, a pickup of eight. One of his better runs of the game that time. They blocked it well on the sweeper on the left side. Well, I think they got to pay so much attention to Vincent's short passes. Can't fall asleep on that run, though. Second down and two for the Eagles. They trail it 20-10 to 10 here in the third quarter. 
Look left, pass comes over the middle, caught in traffic. First down for the Eagles. Little square in pattern coming across the middle of the field. Max Gray seeing more and more action after the injury in the ball game to O'Boyle, and he seems to have taken up his spot on that slot. He'll remember that catch, though, because Joe Jones left an impression in his back. Big old tattoo with a number 11 on it. Bring Duncan in motion. Might see the jet sweep here. They do hand it to him. Get a block across the 20, 25. Nice cut. 30, 35, 37-yard line. What a move by Kieran Duncan that time as he set up the block well and then cut right inside and got up the field for a first down for the Thunderwolves. Yeah, the receiver on the near side did a good job of not getting caught with an illegal block. He kind of stuck his arm out and then pulled it back in. Great 17-yard uh, gain. Fans sensing this might be their moment to stay in the game right here. Thompson from the gun. Trips to the right. Cooper wide to the left. Pass play over the middle. Boyd's got it in traffic, and he's got the first down. The big man just absorbed two big hits on the play. Almost looked like an option look that time as uh, Thompson running to the right with Bernard McDonald then flipped it over the middle to Boyd. I've seen him practice that play a few times, and it's, it's kind of a goofy-looking pass, but it's one A.J. Thompson's very comfortable throwing. So it's a first and ten Thunderwolves. That silences the crowd here. It's almost like impending doom here, almost settling in, but the Thunderbolts must continue to roll it down the field here. Ball's at the 31-yard line. They lead it by 10. We're down to 6.35 to play here in the third quarter. Thompson up under center. Again, the power formation. They run the draw. Bernard tries to bounce it outside, spins out of a tackle, breaks it, across the 30, 25, 20, up the sideline, knocked out of bounds at about the 10-yard line. Make it the eight. Fans getting excited here. They thought they had Bernard McDonald thrown for a loss, but that's the beauty of the McDonald brothers. Very rarely does that first guy get you. And his specialty is that speed to the outside. And once he broke that one ankle tackle, he was gone. Thunderwolves are being very deliberate here in the huddle, making sure they got the right personnel package out. Cooper wide to the left. Could see the fade pattern here, I suppose. They go to the I formation, bring the fullback into the game, O'Malley. And they're going to run the draw play. Camp bounces outside, inside the five, breaks, tackles, touchdown, Thunderwolves. Boy, you just get that feeling. If you're a Shadron State fan, hey, we finally got him. Looks like we're going to get him for a loss. And he just, those arm tackles, they just kind of melt off him, Joe. He kind of slid. He carried the ball, put his right hand out to steady himself, and just slid across the line six yards. It was a thing of beauty. So O'Donnell in to try the extra point. Radabaugh is the holder. Good snap. Ball's down. Kick is up. And it is good. 5.18 to go here in the third quarter. Thunderwolves continue to stretch it out. They've scored 27 in a row. They lead it 27 to 10 on Fox Sports Pueblo from their own 17. Bernard McDonald is going to start this possession at tailback. Radabaugh in the game. He's wide to the left. Thunderwolves go with a double tight end set with a double slot with tight ends. I mean, that's ultimate power formation. Play action, though. Here's Thompson looking down the middle. Now fires it out in the flat. Ball is caught. He had a lot of choices there, and Radabaugh, who was lined up wide to left, comes up with the grab. Good patience there by uh, A.J. 17 yards on that, and like you said, it was pure power formation, and of course they throw out of it. You know, John, A.J., I talk about it. I think he's a better game player than he is a practice. That ball has some zip on it when he's out here playing in the game. Yeah, the, the, the sad thing is coaches don't like that. They want you to practice as hard as you play. Yeah, just a little extra adrenaline rush because I mean this summer he was throwing some ducks it looked like but they had a lot of, I don't know what call it, a zippy duck if that makes sense. It was hard but it was fluttering. Now he's got that ball spiraling. Here's Bernard off the left side. Cuts across the 40. Down the sideline he goes! They'll never catch him! 20, 10, 5, touchdown Thunderwolves! And the fans that have made the trip across the way love that one for CSU Pueblo. A beautiful run by Bernard McDonald. He has the Jets. Cam has the defeat, the knowledge, the know-how. Bernard McDonald has the Jets. 66 yards. And, you know, I know a lot of the listeners in Pueblo, they even question the decision for the Thunderwolves, you know, not to sign Derek Jackson, who's having a nice career up here for Shadron State, but you get an idea today why. I said he'd be the third best back on the Thunderwolves. No slight against him. He might be the fifth or sixth best back in the conference, but the Thunderwolves have the top two. Extra point kick is up, and it is good. It ends up on the roof of the uh, physical education building across the way. Wow. 2.49 to go here in the third quarter. Thunderwolves lead it 34-10 to on Fox Sports Pueblo. Vincent now a little hand signal out to the right side of the formation here, calling the audible. Here come the Thunderwolves up the middle. They pick it up, pass over the middle, and a nice grab in the clear. 
there across the 30, but an ankle tackle. Jones got burned on the play, but he saved a touchdown. Vincent threaded the needle that time. What a grab by Max Gray, the redshirt freshman. Hunter Hughes isn't going to be happy about that. They had the play diagnosed. Just great execution on Shadron's part. Fourth down. They're going to go for it here. Fourth and seven over the middle, and it's intercepted. Jones has it across the 15, 20, up the sideline, 25, 30, 35, 40. Needs a block. He's across midfield, up the sideline, cuts back inside, and is hauled down at the 38-yard line. But Joseph Jones playing center field that time. The pass had too much air on it. And he playing center field, caught it, and then got it up the side. And all these Thunder Wolves, they're well-schooled. They love to try to take that ball to the house. You know, I'm not sure if he's one of the ones who had an interception. If not, that's like the ninth or tenth player, different player, who's had a pick for CSU Pueblo this year. Hard to believe Thunder Wolves trailed at one point in this game 10 to nothing. They've scored 34 straight. Here's that power formation. Three tight ends on the left side of the formation. Play action. Thompson looks down the left sideline, fires it left. He's got Duncan open. Hauls it in at the 20-yard line. Kieran tried to spin and get up the field. They're going to give him forward progress to the 22-yard line as he kind of backtracked a little bit after catching the ball, trying to make a move, but still another impressive throw by A.J. Thompson. 34 unanswered points, Jim. It was 10 to nothing. Bad guys. Thompson up under center. Here's the power formation left. Now they bring one of the tight ends, Boyd, to the right side of the formation. He's going to go out in the uh, slot, catches the ball. they got a block, puts his head down, lumbering, hurtling his way down to the 10-yard line. Full head of steam there by Zach Boyd and gets down for the first and goal for the Thunderbolts right at the 10-yard line. Thing of beauty again. He's a quarterback from Fort Lupton who's turned into probably one of the better tight ends in the conference. Boyd in motion to the left side of the formation this time. Bernard is the lone back, gets the handoff right up the middle, drives to the end zone. Did he get in? I think a need. No, Agar going to give him the touchdown. And then he's blasted after the play is over. The ball came loose, but they are crediting it at a touchdown for Bernard McDonough. The only question was, was his knee on the turf? But they did signal touchdown, Thunderwolves. Man, did he hit that hole with a vengeance. Got tripped up at about the five, but somehow kept on his feet enough to dive it on into the end zone. No replay in Division II college football, so you don't have to worry about it. O'Donnell in to try the extra point. Good snap. Ball's down. Kick is up, and it is good. 14-24 to go here in the fourth quarter. Thunderwolves now lead it 41-10 on Fox Sports Pueblo. So first and 10 for the Eagles from the 25-yard line. Thunderbolts lead it 41-10. to 10. Here's the handoff. This is the third string tailback, and he is swallowed alive by the man they call Rome, Ikachuku Ihanaju. Makes the stop after a short gain, maybe two on the play. I just like saying that, Joe. It's my favorite new name, you know. You know what I like now, and, and, and of course... I'm sure Riston doesn't care, but I like when the backups play with the other team's starters and show that they can play just as good. You know, Tundra's getting very talented, Joe. Tundra's actually sending me pictures now from Yellowstone, howling on some mountaintop there, listening to the ball game. Up there somewhere in Wyoming or Montana, I'm not sure which side. I think it's in Montana. It's she is. I keep wanting to call Tundra a he, but it's a she. First and 10 for the pack at the 33-yard line. They run the draw play. Here's Bernard into the clear, across the 40, 45, 50, splits the defense, cuts it outside, tripped up slightly, into the clear again, breaks another tackle, 10, 5, touchdown! One of the most incredible runs you'll ever see. That is Sports Center top 10 material right there. That was an unbelievable run by Bernard McDonnell. Take that, big brother. 67 yards. I mean, he was tripped up a couple times, broke tackles, stayed on his feet, takes it all the way into the end zone. 60-something. Ball down. Kick is up, and it is good. Thunderwolves pouring it on. 10-16 to go here in the fourth quarter. They did it 48-10 on Fox Sports. Well, Back in the pocket, flushed out of the pocket. Trace Gray's got his man. Hauls Matt Vincent down. That's one thing Trace Gray can do for you. He comes off that edge with 
some speed. Now, we talked about Trace Gray this week on the John Riston Show. He's the guy you want off the bus. Nobody looks better in a uniform out there than Trace Gray. He's just built, and he just finally got a sack. I don't know if they sacked Vincent today because he's been so elusive, but they finally got one. Yeah, he was had him in his sights and delivered him to the turf for a loss of 10. Second down and 20 all the way back at the 47-yard line of the Eagles. Straight drop back by Vincent. Here comes the late blitz. Pass over the middle, caught, and then getting to the turf in a hurry. I can tell you right now, Joe, you saw it. Max Gray caught that ball, and he said, find the hole to crawl into. Well, Ryan Merrill was coming, so he just ducked. Well, self-preservation is never a bad thing when you're down 48-10. to 10. Straight drop back by Vincent. Here comes pressure off the edge. Corner blitz, pass down the middle. Great catch! Oh, my goodness, what a grab down the middle of the field. Fans come to their feet. And again, it's that man, Max Gray, incredible grab. Telling you what, that might be one of the, the, the few offensive highlights Shadron's had in the second half. Well, he may have looked for the hole to hide in on that last play, but there he stretched out and sold out to come up with that ball. Great catch all the way down to the 25-yard line of the Thunderwolves. Thunderwolves defense now runs out. Shadron State in a conventional formation here. They might take one shot at the end zone. What the heck? Take the snap. They're just going to hand the ball up the middle to Derek Jackson. Tries to get outside. He's taken down by Payer. And that will do it after the nine-yard gain by Derek Jackson. There's the cannon. That's the final game or final score here today, 48-10. to 10. Thunderwolves come from 10 down early to score 48 consecutive points and defeat Shadron State 48-10. to 10. Back with our postgame show right after this on Fox Sports Pueblo.